Hi guys, and uh, welcome to Art with Nathan. We previously were on Instagram Live, and now we've moved on to a new platform, YouTube, and we're so excited uh, to present uh, uh, a whole series of art courses for you. The first series will cover drawing and uh, all, uh, a whole range of things to do with drawing. And the aim is to, at the end, to be a competent draftsman or draftswoman. Uh, we have additional series that we're going to look at painting, we're going to look at acrylic paint, we're going to do some graffiti, but that's all in the future. And uh, if you have a look around, you'll see that I'm in a completely different space. Before, I was in my little loft studio at my house, which is really nice and cozy, but now we're in this big, expansive studio. It really is so beautiful. Behind me, you see some of my artworks. Uh, we've got lovely nat natural light, and so we can really just stretch out and make some wonderful artworks in this place. Um, before we start, I just want to say a special thank you to Ash and the elders just for seeing art as an important thing in this campus, as a, one of the pillars in this campus, and uh, just bringing this culture uh, into our community. So we really just appreciate that. <clears throat> so um, today I want to talk about drawing. And, uh, and drawing, I think it's really, it's, it's tricky to define. It's, it's one of those things that's hard to grasp. And if you guys, if you know someone who you can draw, it's, it's almost like they know a magic trick. Uh, we say they are talented, that they see the world differently. All of these things are true. But drawing is a learned skill. It's something that we can all learn, uh, just like writing or riding a bike. Um, it, it's, it's the way you see the world. And uh, it's connected to something like learning a language. It's very similar, in fact. It's connected to learning to write. And it's a, it's a, it's a construction on how you see the world. And, uh, um, and it's, it's very difficult to, to, to begin to draw. But once you understand the thinking behind drawing, the conceptual nature that goes behind beginning to draw, uh, we can, we, you see the world differently and it, it, it becomes more attainable. So I want to just show you on this board, I've just done a funny, sort of my version of a funny meme that you might have seen before. You'll see it's uh, how to draw a panda. Okay, someone commented it looked like a rat. I'm very offended by that. You know who you are. Um, uh, you see step one, step two, step three, and then all of a sudden you have this finished drawing. And, and I think it's so often in our experience of drawing that we see that there's, this, there's these gaps. And we just don't know how, how do we jump from here to there. And some of us will say, well, I can't even get to step one. And uh, it really is just a, a conceptual thing. Another big part of drawing is the physical part. So drawing is a construct, just like language. Language is, so give a demonstration. I'm sitting on a chair, all right? It's a physical chair that I'm sitting on. Okay, what you are seeing is a digital rendering of the chair. So it's not real, it's a construct, believe it or not, okay? And if I wrote chair on the whiteboard, that too communicates chair, but it's language. And if I even drew a picture of a chair, all right? Believe me, guys, I can draw. I just need to warm up, all right? Even the simple line drawing, all right, that communicates chair, okay? It's, it, it's a language. It's the way we see things. We, we tend to abstract things, and that really is what drawing is. And uh, even this line drawing of a chair, if I developed it, if I built it up, if I constructed it, this can begin to look more like a, what we consider a realistic rendering. And just, just for terminology, terminology's sake, uh, to say something's realistic, we always think it, it looks like life, but uh, it's not actually the best term. The term that I like to use is mimetic. It resembles life, it mimics life, but really it is a completely constructed thing. Uh, this isn't a real panda, it doesn't have form, it doesn't have shape, it, it is uh, on a completely two-dimensional surface but we figured out how to create a series of lines and shapes to create that look. <clears throat> so I want to teach you uh, the, the first thing we're going to think about drawing. Um, if you think about music, music is made out of notes, very basic notes. I think there's five notes, maybe more. If you're a musician, tell me in the comments. But it's really simple. Okay, I'm getting eight notes. I don't know. You can see I never actually did piano lessons for a few years, but they told me to stop. I need to go play outside. Um, so, but it, okay, let's do a better example is language, the English language, 27 letters in the alphabet. 
Okay, very simple. A single digit, um, and uh, they are a, a single letter, and they each have a sound. But every single book ever written is made up of those 27 letters. Okay, they're very simple. But if you don't understand each one of those letters, you can't write, you can't speak, you can't write a book. Okay, so the art is the same. Art has very basic elements, principles that we, and that we begin with. And um, so often the reason why you feel that you can't draw or you can't depict an object is because those basic things haven't been addressed. And so often you'll hear our teachers say there isn't a formula, there isn't a way to draw. And it's true because it's such an individual thing. Drawing is so personal. Um, and another definition of drawing is a trace of human touch. So it is so personal. There's a physicality to it. Uh, it's how you see things, but it's also how you move and how you interpret something on the page. And so uh, there's a lot of nuance. Perhaps you haven't realized that yet. But um, so when I taught drawing for many years, I taught a formula. Don't be shocked, okay? Um, I thought about this a lot. The, it isn't a universal formula, but it is a way to begin to think about drawing, uh, to enter into this wonderful field, and it, to be able to draw. And with drawing, you can express your ideas, your emotions. It's also a really good way to pass the time. Instead of scrolling on your phone, you can draw in a notebook. But we'll get to that later. So my drawing formula, okay, is uh, the first element of art is line, okay? Excuse my handwriting. I've got a doctor's handwriting. Line's very simple. A line is taking a dot or a walk. That is what a line is. That's the only definition you ever need, okay? All right? And the next thing, lines develop into shape, okay? A shape is basically a line that is gone around and met its beginning. Okay, so like a circle. Okay, all right, so it's like a circle. The next uh, thing we add to make it what you want from a drawing. So a drawing can consist of these two elements. Okay, it can be a line. Okay, you can have completely linear drawings. That's fine, there are no rules. It can be, be shape. Okay, line and shape. And the, the third thing. Right? What we're after is form. Okay? This is what most of you are after when, when you are doing a drawing, is you want form. And so how does line and shape translate into form? Well, over here we need to add, right, we need to add value. Okay? All right. So by value I mean light and dark, shading, tone, that's how we achieve form. So I'm going to show you very basically how that would work. How, do, how does line shape plus value translate into form? So we're not drawing yet. Okay, we're not drawing. This is just a purely conceptual download you can put into your brain to start thinking about how drawing works. Okay, so I'm teaching you the ABCs right now. So one thing that I like to do when I draw um, is use these whiteboard, whiteboard markers and this whiteboard because it's a really good way to conceptually teach drawing. Uh, for me, yeah, a drawing can exist on a whiteboard, but uh, most of you will be drawing at home with pencils or charcoal on paper. There's a different relationship. So with a whiteboard, I can't press hard or soft, or there's no nuances. So what I do is I use the, the warmer colors like orange and red to show the construction lines. So we're gonna talk about construction lines just now. But to show the initial lines that we're going to do, and then I use the darker colors to show the more choice lines. So um, see this as a purely like a, a teaching explanation about drawing. Later on, I will stick a piece of paper on and we'll play around with the charcoal. Okay, so we first, we're going to have a line. So I'm going to take a dot, I'm going to take it for a walk in a circle, okay? And... Uh, it's not a perfect circle, but I can fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do construction lines, lots and lots of lines, okay? Just trying to get it rounded. I'm cor cor correcting my mistakes. I can erase. It's going to look like until I feel that circle is nice 
and around the circle that I want. Okay, so that's, that's just one of the principles, is draw lots of lines. Construction lines is really the act of drawing. Um, so many people think it's the finished product, but these construction lines, this is the real process of drawing. This is the real work that an artist is doing, is these things that are underneath the finished product. So if you think about an artwork like a drawing or a painting, in terms of a film, what you only see is the final frame, the last hurrah, okay? An artist sees the entire process to get to that, every single frame. So it's, it's one of the privileges of being an artist is to be able to see something uh, from nothing and see that final thing. But artists often hide, hide this process. And in this joke at the top here, all right, this joke at the top, that is, that is kind of what, what the punchline is. It's one, two, three, hide away, all right, finish the drawing, four, done, okay? And so um, kind of like a magician's secret, I'm just going to reveal everything to you guys, okay? There's nothing that's going to be hidden. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. Okay, so like I said, drawing is a touch, is a trace of human touch, all right? So there I've got this really like, I think, probably looks like a furry circle, okay? And uh, I'm kind of happy with that. I'm going to get, uh, if I was drawing with charcoal, I'd get a darker pen and uh, choose the lines that I want. So I'm going to get my blue, stands out a bit, and I'm just going to go over where I think the lines that I want. Okay, great, cool, okay. So now I'm drawing a line, and it's committing into a shape. Cool, okay. Pretty sure that there's more exciting things on YouTube than watching a guy draw a circle, but I promise you there isn't. Um, it's better than uh, those makeup videos. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, if this was a, on a piece of paper, I would, I would erase those construction lines, but I don't want anyone to see them. I don't want them to know that I struggled and this was hard. I want to, look at, I want to be a virtuoso and make it look really easy. Okay, so we've got line, and the line is translated into a shape. Okay, it sounds very really basic again, but this is really the basic principles of art. Um, the next thing, we want to add value. So there's, so let me explain value real quick. Um, tone. Okay, so let's say we have a bar. Okay, so anyone who's edited a, a photograph, okay, and you want to up the contrast, maybe there's a little slider, you do that. And, uh, and over here you have zero, okay, and here you have 10, okay. And let's say zero is pure like white, it's light. So we're talking about, let's say value or tone over here, okay. So zero is your whitest and 10 is your absolute darkest dark, it's black as you can get, okay. And I'm going to try to do this with a whiteboard marker, okay. So I'm using a technique called hatching here, and we'll go over how to hatch in a later lesson. But just for now. Okay, so, right, so we have, and then over here is like a, a mid-tone, like a five. Okay, so this is what I talk about, what I, when I'm talking about value, I'm talking about light or dark. And so we're gonna add value to our circle. So this is where the uh, kind of the abstract conceptual side to it comes in. We've got to imagine um, that there is light on this, on this two-dimensional flat thing. So the light itself also has to, be, has to be abstracted in. So I'm going to choose a direction. So I'm going to say the light is coming from this direction, okay? So um, anyone who... Uh, has taken a photo or um, has looked at themselves in the mirror, uh, most of the time we can, we can sort of see where light is coming from. And uh, we can make a few assumptions from this. So here's the light coming from this direction. So we know around about over here is going to be just absolute whiteness. There's going to be no darkness. And then around about the bottom over here, this is where it's going to be dark because no light is going to hit it. This, just imagine this as a round ball, okay? So I'm going to add some tone. So over here, like I said, this is our number 10, okay? All right. 
And I'm going to go down the scale, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, till I get over here. A zero, okay. Again, this is for people who have never drawn before, who want to draw, and for people who are drawing but feel like there are gaps missing um, in their drawing education. Okay. So there we have build it up a little bit more. Okay, so there we have the illusion of form. And uh, you see that it's all of a sudden, this thing that started out as a line, it turned into shape, we added value and tone, it has the illusion of form. It looks three-dimensional, or our brain, our brain is telling us that it is three-dimensional to a certain extent. I know the shading isn't perfectly sp smooth, but for uh, concept's sake, that's what it looks like. And so, uh, what do you do just to kind of ground this even more into, into uh, reality is we would add something like a horizon line. So now it's an object sitting on a table. Okay, somewhere it's maybe a cricket ball or a tennis ball or an apple or an orange. The light shining this way. And then it, we can draw a shadow on that. All of a sudden, okay, we have conceptually an object sitting there on the table. So, so this principle, you can see how it works to create something that I think uh, maybe some of you would, would, would be proud to draw, but every single drawing, if you're looking to mimic life, right, goes along these, uh, these basic principles. And it can get more complex. It gets ramped up depending on what you are drawing. Um, so, yeah, so that, so that is the very first things that we'd look at, line, shape, form, add value to make tone. So the next thing that I want to talk about is, is the construction lines, okay? Uh, raise this one, go on. All right, keep that over there. There we go. Okay. So construction lines, like I said, is, it is the act of drawing. That is the real process. That is the real work. It's many, many, many lines. And I've been privileged enough to have gone and seen some of the, the greatest artists' drawings, the, un, the unfinished sketches, um, works that they hadn't completed, uh, uh, sketches from their notebooks. And even I've seen a Leonardo uh, um, da Vinci drawing that really just looked like a scribble. It was just this ball of charcoal lines and and for me it was just a revelation because we so often look at especially those high renaissance artists as the epitome of uh, technical brilliance but there I saw an individual that I could relate to. It was someone who was struggling, he was working with his drawing and so often he had so many lines underneath his drawings. He would, he would get his piece of charcoal and it would just be line after line after line and what he would do then is he would pick up his pen, his ink pen, and he would just choose the lines that he wanted from those construction lines. It was a real, I could see it was a struggle. And so often if you go and examine and look very closely at, let's say if you have access to, uh, if you go online to an unfinished one, you can actually see those construction lines if you look carefully enough below each of his drawings. And so um, drawing is, a, so when I say the word struggle, it doesn't have to be a, a negative thing. It's something that's absolutely pleasurable. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to discover, to, to find, and even if a drawing doesn't work out, that you've learned something from that. So draw as many lines as you can when, when looking at uh, whatever you're drawing. We, we don't finish with a finished product. Okay, so, um, so, the, the ne so after construction lines, I think, um, I think I want to talk about this panda, okay? Well, maybe let's something a bit more simple than a panda. Let's talk about this apple, okay? So uh, it's one of the most simple things you can draw, but uh, so often we're not impressed by an apple or even a photo of an apple, but a well-drawn or well-painted apple, people are impressed by it. Think about it. If it looks quite real, people like to see that. So we're just going to go over a couple ways in which you can draw an apple. Okay. 
So if I look at this apple, okay, right, so you'll see that it's a bit uh, lopsided. And so um, what I want to do is I want to imagine this apple as if it was made out of glass or wire, okay? So it's completely transparent. So I'm applying abstract thought onto a real object. Okay, so how would I construct this if it was made out of wire? So the first way, and this is the way that I draw, is I want to look at it in terms of geometry. Okay, what shape is this apple? So everyone's thinking a circle? Yes, that is the most basic shape. So I can say, okay, well, I'm going to put the apple aside and I'm going to draw a circle that approximately resembles this apple. So, okay, cool. So I'm going to say it's kind of like a, an oval that looks like that. Okay, so that's a, a first step. Okay, lots and lots of lines. Okay, and this may be the way some of you guys will approach it. Okay, so I'm imagining it like that. Okay, um, I'm also going to draw a reference line going down the middle. Now, so some people call that an access line. Okay, um, it's just, just to help me to, so if I imagine a line going straight down that apple, it'll help me position certain things on the apple, like the little stalk or, or little, uh, the little outlines and uh, the roundedness where it goes into, I don't know what that part of the apple is called. If anyone knows, please write in the comments. Um, so that'll help me. Another way, okay, that I can see this ap apple abstractly so I've done rounded lines, is I can look at it in terms of hard geometry, okay, hard geometric lines. So, um, and this is, this, is, this is a bit of a, um, a different way of seeing it, and this is actually how I draw naturally. So I'm going to construct the apple in terms of straight lines, because I'm really good at drawing straight lines, okay, at different angles. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, do is do my little symmetry line, Imagining that this is made out of glass, I'm going to draw a line going straight across to represent the top of the apple. Okay, I'm going to do a line coming straight down to represent the side of the apple, the extent which it ends there, and another on this side. And if I look at the bottom, I've got a line going along the bottom, and then a connecting line like that. Okay, so then what I do with a geometric shape like this is I would begin to develop it in the same way I drew lots of lines. Into the apple shape. Okay. Okay. All right, and I want to maybe place my little stalk somewhere. So it's over there. Cool. So I just want to point out at the moment we are only using these to to line and shape. And this week, if you are going to be practicing this technique, this is where I want you to stay, just with line and shape. Let's not do this right now. Let's focus on this. These two things, line and shape, they are connected. And another way that I could draw this apple is with multiple circles. Okay? So let's say... All right. I would say it's made up of about three ovals. So I'm going to draw a center line again. Here's my first oval, you see over there, a second oval, and then a third oval. And then I can just connect them. Cool. All right, so if you're watching and following me at home, okay, and uh, someone comes in the room and they ask what you're doing, just say, I'm drawing three circles, can't you see? All right. Okay, so there we have three ways of viewing a real object in the world, of abstracting it, constructing it in terms of basic geometric shapes. Uh, a single circle, okay, uh, with straight lines and with multiple uh, organic shapes. So, uh, all of a sudden, an apple, which is one of the most simple rudimentary objects in your life, has become quite complex. And this is one of the absolute gifts of being an artist, of being beginning to draw, is that you start looking at things like a plate of chips 
or uh, a tree or a shoe in, in terms of this in terms of this kind of thinking uh, all of a sudden we sort of think uh, how do I draw that what shapes what lines consist of this thing how do I approach this if I want to draw we start to see complexity where we once thought there was symmetry all of a sudden the world just expands exponentially we start seeing things uh, that we would have never seen before and started to marvel at things that we once were thought were mundane and boring and simple and it's a real gift and it really is wonderful so if I were to, to say to you going forward after this lesson is to get yourself like a little notebook or even if it's a aligned notepad that you can find anywhere and begin to express things that you see in your life in terms of these simple shapes okay so um, in terms of line and shape so your aim isn't to complete the drawing is to begin to ask yourself how do I depict this object in front of me in terms of these two steps as a line and a shape using construction lines now I think I don't, one thing I don't explain about construction lines is these lines are very light they they're not hard you're not pressing in there isn't force they are easy they're just a, a slight of hand you never want to be able to run your finger over the page and feel the little divot where your line has been drawn it's it's super light and I would say don't use a light pencil like a 2H or um, a 3H because you still end up pressing hard what you want to develop is just a gentleness a softness of hand when you are drawing this so uh, your homework is to get a notebook, any piece of paper, and just begin to depict, depict things that you see in your life in terms of line and shape. Just these two steps, as many as you can. And uh, don't, don't fill, a whole page, fill a whole page with them. Draw them small, all the way down, down the page. Fill the entire page with objects, simple objects like an apple, like a bottle, a glass, a shoe, whatever. As much as you can. Because what you're doing is you're teaching your brain to start seeing the world in terms of uh, line and shape. It's, you're teaching your brain to see the world in terms of abstract thinking. You're teaching your brain a new language. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, this is the end of our first lesson, and I really hope this is useful to you. And I just want to promote our NCCB, or our NCCB platforms during the week. Go on our website, our Instagram, our Facebook. Check out what we're doing. Our main service is 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning, and 8.30 is uh, our children's ministry. Hope to see you there. Thank you so much.